Great. Well, thanks again, Dean. Um, we've got, a, like I said, we've got a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, what I'm going to do is put everybody on mute, and then probably within the last 10 minutes, 15, 20, or I guess 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to open it up for questions. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody real quick. That way, there aren't any interruptions um, through, throughout the throughout the main program here. All callers are muted. So uh, welcome everybody. Again, I think you know with managing your database effectively, we we all need some sort of system. And no matter what system you're currently using, it's a matter of taking a look at it. How do you make it better? How do you make it better? Because you know your database, and maybe write this down if you don't have a pen and paper. Because again, we're going to re reference a lot of websites and, and and then tips as well. But <clears throat> maybe write this down: the fact that your database is your most valuable asset. It's not your building. It's not your your computer, it's not anything else but the relationships that you have with, with everybody else. So being able to effectively manage those <clears throat> will contribute to your bo bottom line. <clears throat> when it comes down to <clears throat> no matter how many contacts you, if you have right now, if you're just getting started or maybe you have 2,000 contacts in your database, the more that you can attract um, keep track of them individually, not just their name and phone number, but what some of their per personal interests are, where they are within their life, if they have children and so forth. Being able to remember those little conversations uh, about individuals and then uh, in addition to that, effectively following up with them on a regular basis, whether wherever they are within the sales process itself. So if if you're just meeting them at an open house, they can be qualified as an interested buyer. And then how do you move them, you know, how do you insert their, them into your database to where you effectively keep in contact with them to you know, getting them into a buyer's agency agreement? Once you have, let's say, the contract signed, what steps do you have to do to be able to follow up with them to get from um, buyer, you know, agency agreement to contract? And then there's Notice each, each step through the sales process, there's almost a different form of communication. And because real estate is a transactional business, we do the same activities over and over again. By having some sort of, you know, not just the database set, set up, but then the system to be able to maintain those relationships will get you um, way up here on the very good for, for customer service. As far as some of the learning objectives we're going to cover today, uh, Number one is you know list the reasons why database management is crucial crucial for successful real estate agents, and it doesn't matter if you again if you're just starting out or you're an experienced agent. If you're an experienced agent that has you know is working you know let's say 50 to 100 transactions a month, maybe it's a matter of of now it's time to go back through your database and delete some of those people who you haven't been in contact with or move or can't be a decision maker or can't refer you business. So no matter where you are in the spectrum. Um, it, it's a matter of, of keeping in contact with those relationships. And then uh, in addition to that, creating the, the system to run your business. And we'll talk about some ways you can incorporate maybe Microsoft Word and with Microsoft Outlook. That way, you know, because Outlook and Word work together, they're in the same Microsoft program, you can actually set it up to where you can do mail merges and so, and so forth well, with your business. <clears throat> Probably one of the most important things within managing your database is being able to categorize. And we're going to talk about how, how you can categorize all of your contacts so you can market to them based on either how you found them, your, your relationship with that individual, and maybe where they are within the transaction um, process. And then finally, you know, with a big wave with, with social media and, and all these different sites, it's a matter of taking the database you already have in Microsoft Outlook and then exporting them maybe into LinkedIn or into Facebook or into Twitter. And there are some steps that you can take that will save you time as opposed to having to go through each one individually. So um, why database is crucial, here are some steps, and we're going to go through each one of these individually. Again, if you're an experienced agent, you may have heard that you have to keep in touch you know, with, with, with the people in your sphere of influence. And it should be, let's say, no surprise to you, which is why I have the picture of you know, the woman standing on the sign, no standing, please. Uh, you probably heard this before and again and again. Um, just, it's just, it's, I think it's now time to really take action, especially if you're not getting as, as many transactions as you, as you were before. Now is the time to really work, work on those systems. Um, there are several ways to 
uh, build your database in Microsoft Outlook, whether it's asking personally for the contact information all the way down to networking, and I'll try and go through some of these individually. That way you can maybe take a look at what you're already doing and make it better. Not necessarily replace it, but how do you take a look at what you're currently doing and make it better? Uh, as far as asking for contact information, you know, again, what I said with our database being our most valuable asset, uh, the more accurate your database is, the more, the more money it's going to be worth as far as, you know, asking for phone, address, and so forth. But whenever you ask somebody for their personal information, I think that this key question is, is mandatory with, with every person you meet. And it says, is it okay if I keep in touch with you by email or any other form of social media? Now, with that, it kind of takes the burden off to say, if somebody says, yeah, I'll, I don't mind you keeping in touch with me, uh, is a lot better than taking their information and blindsiding them with, a, with an email marketing message or, or, or so forth. So I think that that question is extremely important um, throughout, throughout every person that you meet. And then in addition to that, when you're attending, let's say, networking events or classes or, or other functions, I think most sales professionals are, are in the – they're currently taking business cards from individual, but it's what they're writing and remembering on those business cards which really makes a difference. And what I have here written down as far as writing down on the back of the business cards, um, not just write down some personal information about themselves, but also write down how you can help them. So if you're asking how you can help them, you're really you know, asking what their needs are, and by being in touch with that person's individual needs, they are more likely to, you know, number one, remember you, but also in addition, if you were to help them, such as give them a referral for your business, then for, for their business, then the likelihood of them referring you is going to be much higher. Uh, on your website or on your blog or whatever you have as far as some sort of digital communication, as far as collecting names for your database, have some sort of sign-up form on your website. Now, if you already have something uh, set up, that's great. If you don't have something set up, I have a um, the one the one that I use for my business is called iContact. So it's www.icontact.com, and what it allows me to do is ask for you know email, first name, last name, phone number. Uh, the the challenge with you know asking people for for information on a website, it's almost a privilege to be able to receive somebody's information because, let's face it, if you take a look at every real estate agent's website right now, I guarantee you they have some sort of uh, section that says search for homes here. Well, that isn't going to differentiate you anymore. So it's a matter of, of get, you know, I have this, this fourth item here, must give something in re, uh, return for information. I think that's key in order to build an effective database. If you've ever received, let's say, a lead that says, you know, email me at mickeymouse at AOL.com, you know that that's not a qualified lead. That's just something you want to throw in the garbage. Uh, so it's a matter of having qualified leads that no matter if you're a mortgage professional or you're a real estate professional, whatever business that you're in, delivering enough value to where they're going to want to put their information so you can keep in contact with them. Um, for, for real estate professionals, I think it, it's, it's strongly recommended to get, have some sort of question in there that talks about motivation. Are you willing to, to move within the first three months or six months uh, or, or nine months or I'm just, I'm just looking? Uh, those are types of, of, of fields or maybe you write that in the personal information of that uh, on, in, in the database. That way you know how to respond up with that, you know, to that individual. Um, I think uh, for those of you that are op running open houses, you know, you know, when I was running open houses, I was, you know, afraid to ask people for their email. But the more I did it, the more I said, you know, said to myself, okay, if they're willing to give me their email address, I best follow up with them in some sort of fashion. So um, whether it's having some sort of online registration with a laptop, that way they can fill it out on their own, or um, you, you actually have a paper registration form. Those are the, those are the people that you want to keep in touch with uh, and, and, and write down as much information as you possibly can and then feed that with, into your Outlook database as well. Um, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier. 